All right, thank you. Welcome back to a to the tutorial series on the first-person shooters. As you can see here, I'm saving the map real quick. I figured it did take that long, but it did. And the last video we covered sp respawning with res with saved values that we had when we crossed a threshold, such as like a checkpoint or something. We also dealt with respawning before we hit that point, so we could respawn our player start. But we did encounter a problem. We had an issue to where, as long as we were playing the game we were fine in our respawning but as soon as we would stop playing the game we would close out of it and we would go to play it again if we kill ourselves on top of this the the player start up here we would actually respawn down here at the player start now it took me a little bit of tinkering but I found a way that does actually work so if we open up the game mode here I added a new variable or should I say I'm using a variable that I had in here before. It's the respawn variable. Okay. I set it here to false and all. Kept that. We still have this being tested. I did flip these two though. So whatever we had connected to the false, connect to the true and the true to the false now. So that if respawn is false, we're just spawning at the player start. If it's true, we're spawning at wherever the checkpoint was. I'm no longer setting the respawn here. I am actually now setting it out here and open up the checkpoint. I'm actually setting it here. When I cross the checkpoint, I'm actually setting it there. That way I have everything in control with my checkpoint stuff and I don't have to worry about any of that. So that actually fixed our problem. We were able to respawn here, if we started a new game and we died before we hit that checkpoint, after that checkpoint, we would respawn at that checkpoint if we died anywhere beyond that, regardless of how many times we hit the play button, regardless of how many times we hit the sa we saved it, whether we actually had a save file or didn't have a save file, all of that worked. Okay, the only other thing I can think of, let me check this real quick, and no, okay, all that stayed the same, okay. So in this video, we're going to actually add a mini map, so it'll be a short video, it won't be too hard. There are a couple of ways out there to do this. Um, I know of two, but the one I'm, I'm only going to show you one, and it's the system that I feel is the most efficient for getting a mini map out. The only drawback to this is if you actually wanted a map, like let's change this to the top, get off wirefront, go lit, and you actually wanted a map to look just like that right there, without all the the game stuff you know all these little boxes and the collision meshes and stuff you know if you wanted that to be your your mini map and like you show this corner of it here and as the character moves the map moves with it so you pan across um, there I want to say that there's a video out there or something out there to, sh to help show how to do that if you go to the unreal forums that there is a person up there saying that they found one and they found a way to do it um, and he's talking about releasing it to the marketplace I'm just not sure when so kinda keep an eye out for that if you want that kind of a mini map or if you know how to do that by all means throw it in the comments below and help some, help some people out that are trying to figure out how to do stuff like that but for now we're just gonna show one that shows everything in a 3D look from a top-down perspective so if I'm sitting up here and I'm looking down on it that's how my mini maps gonna look alright so the first thing we need to do is we need to create the texture in which we're gonna render this image to so we go we right click in our textures folder select materials and we do Mater render target okay and then we just name this I'm going to name my mini map capture. You can name yours anything you want. Right click on that, create the material, and we're just going to leave it uh, capture map. We're just going to leave it that. And drag and drop that into our materials folder so that we keep everything nice and, and neat and simple. Now, we only have to do two more things. The first thing is going in here to our first person character, go into our viewport. We want to add a component. We're going to add a scene capture component 2D. All right, we're just going to name this mini map capture, and we want to link that. So you go over here to target texture, our texture target, and select the render target that we had just made. 
scroll that on up as far as you want now this will take some testing I know about where I want mine so I already know but it'll take some testing on putting it exactly where you want to and make sure you rotate it 90 degrees so that you your widget looks like this you want it pointing downward so if you even look at this you see the axis the the red arrow here is pointing down go ahead compile and save that we're actually done in that and now we're gonna go into our HUD here now you see we have our ammos here we have our health bar here well we're gonna put the mini map over here in this corner so we're gonna take our image and we're gonna take an image node over here we're gonna drag it out here now I want my map to be 300 by 300 in size I want my anchor to be in the bottom corner and I want my location to be negative 300 by negative 300. What that's going to do is that's going to put it in the very bottom corner. It might actually clip a little bit, so let's go ahead and do negative 305, negative 305, just to have it a little bit off the border of the screen so we can actually see it a little better. Now we take under appearances, under brush, you'll see an image. Under image, you just select the mini map material that we had made you'll see it goes blank for a minute then it goes black that's exactly what we want to see All right, and then we hit play we have nothing and we hit play again still have nothing it did this to me a minute ago one moment you can see that the render is actually capturing though oh we have to save it that's what it is my apologies so go ahead and save your map. That way you can save the, the mini map capture renders. And then when we play, it's still black. Why is it still black? Oh, yeah. Um, we have to go back to the material that we had created. Okay. And we don't want the base color. We want actually emissive. All right. And then that'll actually do it for us. So we can save that. Go ahead and come back out here. Hit play. And then there's our mini map. Now, the one thing I like about this particular style of mini map, as I spin my character around, you notice how the mini map spins with me. So I can kind of get a better direction, a better idea of where I'm heading. I'm dropping down through. You can see I'm walking through all of this. You can still see the 3D aspects of the level. And you still see the, like, I can shoot these blocks. But we don't see very far ahead of us. So we would just have to play around with this wherever you want it to be. Like if we wanted to drag it up a little higher, like say right there. I'll save and play it and then see now we have a bigger view but we really don't see much of our map area but now I can see I'm shooting blocks from the distance here I can see them better and everything's looking a lot better now than it did before and that's all there is to making a mini map it's really simple. It's really quick. Uh, like I said, there's some stuff online you can look up where you can actually make a, a camera blueprint and it le sits above you. You actually place it in the world above your character and it follows your character around. But when you go to spin your character around, it, the camera won't spin with you, just your character will. There's also a feature where you can actually be showing your character on the mini map itself. But if you ever want, were curious about like where you're placing, you could always just do something simple. Do a, oh, where are you? You could put a uh, thromber in there. Or no, yeah. Scale it to what you need. And then, do one piece because you don't need anything more. 
set the Z order to one. Um, real quick, I'll cover Z order just so, for people that aren't aware of it. What Z order means is that like you have your screen, your screen is a zero. That's zero. These two are zero. This is zero. I can't put this over top of this and it show. So if I want this to show over this, I have to make this on a higher level, on a higher layer than this. Z order is your layer. That's that's literally all that is. So when I move this over here, put it about center. Let's actually anchor this in the bottom corner, and we put it about middle of it, just roughly to to show off, show it off here. Some we want to change the image color to a. Let's see. with black and there's supposed to be a way to okay there we go that way it doesn't pulse let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger and you can't see black too well against that so let's go with a Okay, that'll be fine. It's just a show anyway. And then see, we kind of have a nice little square there. And it's just kind of something to somewhat represent a player location. It's nothing super fancy. Um, it just helps to kind of give an idea to the player, hey, this is where I'm at on that map. I can look at it and say, hey, I'm not at the top corner of it. I'm actually center of it. And we can, you can actually see the balls too that you're firing. But that's dealing with the mini map. And I hope to see you in the next video. We are going to cover doing a pause menu system. So look forward to seeing you in the next video.